Amen. Amen. Wednesday night I spoke on or shared a little bit about being able to fill up, being able to have the capacity for God to fill you up. Amen. Sometimes we have to go through the devil place, the shaking place, to get the capacity. Amen. So, uh, Miss Eva, your message this morning was right from the throne. Because we first have to be emptied of us before he can ever move. We have to be emptied and poured out from us so he can fill us up with him. It's when we want to hold on to us, he stands back like the gentleman he is and says, okay, when you're ready, I'm here. When you're ready, I'm here. And sometimes we think to ourselves, God, where are you at? How come you're not doing this for me? And then the response sometimes is, well, you need, you need to empty something. Amen? Sometimes we want to be surrounded by like-minded people. Doesn't always work that way, does it? So when God brings you to a place where He wants to empty something out of you so He can fill something else, have gratitude. Amen? I don't know if you heard this or not, but the first thing Eva brought up was, you know what? I'm going to praise God. Amen? God brings us to places to make us stronger. David, would you come forward for me, please? Yeah, you. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Me? Who? 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 Yeah, that's your talking about this, Dave. It's not you. As we, were, as we were worshiping this morning, the Lord spoke to me to wash up your bad foot. Oh, you do. So we're going to wash your bad foot. Amen? Yeah. Take off your shoes. Need help? Need some help? So I came down, I guess it was. Pronounce it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. Counter fasciitis. Plans oh, fasciitis. Oh, yes. You know what? That's oh, messed but up. But God's bigger than that. Yes. Amen. Amen. God's bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So pray with me. If you will. Ooh, it's warm. <laughs> Was it warm water? Father, we anoint this water. And we anoint this foot. And we pray for complete healing upon my bread. We pray, God, that you administer to his foot, minister to his ankle. We pray that you replace all the torn tissue. We pray, God, that the pain will cease. We pray, God, that he walks in an effort to know that you've already healed him. So I pray right now, God, that you just reveal yourself to him in a mighty supernatural way. Heal his body. Heal his foot. Heal his ankle. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't feel no pain. That was the last one. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 God bless you. Oh, 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 can't squeeze that into the left. In my heart, man. Yeah. Mine too. Oh. I then, and last night, I broke a tooth on. Potato salad. Nice and soft. Potato salad. I followed her. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it is like you. You know, remember? One thing we have to always remember about God's healing is already yours. Yeah. It's already yours. Amen? If it's already yours, it belongs to you. Even if you don't feel it, it's yours. Amen? Glory to God. You know what? Make you more be. Amen. Praise God. Turn with me to Acts chapter 1. You remember when uh, Jesus came up out of the water from the baptism? You remember that scripture? You remember when he came out of the water, the heavens opened, the dove landed on him, and he, everybody around there heard a voice, this is my beloved son, whom I am, oh, I am well, please. Okay. 
Amen? Amen? Everyone heard Him speak from Him. Amen? Then, he, then the Bible says in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, well, not so much in John, that He was propelled or led into the desert. But I want you to notice something here. Before He can go into the desert place, before He can go into the wilderness to do battle with the enemy, He had to be filled with the Spirit first. I mean, Jesus had to be filled with the Spirit. That's why the example is when the heavens opened, a dove came down and filled Him with the Spirit. And the Bible says when the Spirit was with Him, He led Him to the desert. He could have not done the battle that He did without Holy Ghost. Even Jesus. Even Jesus could not have done the battle without the Holy Ghost. So, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 1 and I'm going to read verse 7. And we'll go from there. We'll see what the Lord has for us. Amen? And He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or epoch which the Father has fixed for His own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be My witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. After the Spirit comes upon you, after the Spirit indwells in you, after the Spirit has given you the power to go out amongst this world. Amen? Let me tell you something, folks. If you're not out amongst the world, you become stagnant. And what do I mean by stagnant? I mean if you have no one to share your faith with, if you have no one to convince that Jesus is the God, right? Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus died for your sins. You become stagnant. You become, you become peaceful in your own beliefs. Right? There's nothing to challenge that. The Spirit didn't come on you. Bible, the, Jesus says that when the Spirit comes on you, you will speak in other tongues and you will heal the sick and raise the dead in every place you go. Amen. But the Spirit has to come upon you first. When you get saved, the Spirit takes up residence. Do you believe that? And then He comes along and baptizes you, gives you an special anointing to do the things that He's asked you and called you to do. Without the power, you won't be successful. Amen? You can sit back all you want and say, well, you know what, I was saved at, at, at salvation. I was saved and the Holy Spirit took all the darkness and gave me light. But there's more to it than that. There's more to it than that. There's more to it than being satisfied. And don't get me wrong when I say this. There's more to it than being satisfied with just salvation. Because we can be satisfied with salvation and never go and do the commission that we've been called to do. I'm saved. I'm okay. <laughs> and what happens then? Then we be getting into a restful place. We get into a place that now the enemy can bring thoughts onto our brain. And next thing you know, you get the wrong idea of what grace is and you allow yourself to fall into the same things that God just took you out of. Why? It's because you're not with and being led by in the wilderness by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. So the church is going to receive power from on high. And you are the church. You as individuals make up the church. Amen. And what did Jesus say about the church? I will build my church, I will build you, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. We can say the collective church all we want, but woohoo! But the problem is, the problem is, if he's not protecting you from the enemy, there's no church. There's no church because you walk in defeat. But as Holy Ghost begins to protect you and guide you and fill you so the gates of hell cannot prevail, then the rest of the world benefits from your obedience. Amen? The rest of the world benefits from your obedience. Turn with me to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Amen. 
we're going to go to verse 7. Now, the, the, the disciples in this, before this verse, are starting to grumble and gripe and maybe, maybe whine a little bit about where Jesus is going. And so many times Jesus answered them and said, you know what, it's really, it's, really, it's really more important to you that I go away than if I stay. And sometimes we can get lost in the fact that, that if Jesus was here with us, we'd be okay. I've got news for you, folks. Jesus dwells in you. The power of heaven dwells in you. Holy Ghost dwells in you. You are the perfect resemblance of Jesus as long as the Spirit dwells in you. Does that mean we fail? Absolutely. We are the righteousness of God. Verse 7, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper shall not come to you, but if I go, I will send Him to you. Now, let me answer a question that might be going through some people's minds. If I received Holy Spirit when I got saved, then why is Jesus going to send Him back? Simple fact is this, like I just told you. When you got saved, Holy Spirit indwells in you, removes the darkness, fills you with the light, and Jesus comes along and says, I'm going to send you a helper who's going to reveal the mysteries of my word. Amen? He's going to give you power. Power. Verse 8. And when He, when He comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. And concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you no longer behold me. Jesus also tells us in other places of Scripture that, that they don't know me as you know me. They don't know who I am as you know who I am, simply because they don't believe that I am who I am. Amen? The, the, the Gospel of John is full of that kind of analogy. They don't know me. They don't know me because they don't know Him who sent me. So see how important it is to know God and allow Jesus to work out in you so the Helper can come and manifest His power in you? When you get full of power, you have a, 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 a dead battery in your vehicle. Right? You put your charger on it, you fill that dead battery up, and that's all you ever do. You don't see if it worked. You don't turn the key. You don't do nothing. But you just think, you know what? That thing's full of power. Is it really? Have you tried it? Have you tested it? Have you given yourself over to the understanding? Yeah, there's a charger on it. But did it charge up my battery? Holy Spirit keeps your battery charged, folks. He keeps your ability to, to speak out against the things of the world to keep you righteous before Him. Amen? Now, if we are the righteousness of God in Christ, we also have to have the ability to see when we're starting to stray when we're not starting to stray. And the Holy Spirit first is going to keep you protected. Before He ever sends you out amongst the wolves, He will give you the ability to walk in His power before He ever sends you out among the wolves, before He ever sends you to do what He's called you to do. You need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be the power from on high in order to do the, the, the things He's called you to do. And some people think, well, you know, um, I really don't believe this, the Spirit is for today. Well, then why is it in the Bible? Well, I don't believe that, that speaking in other tongues is for today. Well, then why is it in the Bible? Why does Paul say, I'm going to speak in tongues more than you all? Amen? Sometimes we get this, we get this wrong understanding of what it means because we've seen it abused. Yeah. Haven't we? Yeah. We've seen it abused to the point where, you know what, that's got to be phony. But then you have the people that are genuine, the people that the Holy Spirit has really made a reflection of, are trying to fight the battle that those that are walking in prostituting the word, prostituting the other tongues, are trying to get over now. Well, what we need to do is let Jesus do His job in you first and let the Spirit have the power that He wants to give you so you can be an overcomer. Not only you, but all that you come in contact with. You realize, even being in that place right now, going through what she's going through and seeing what she's, going, she's seeing has strengthened her beyond her own understanding. She can look at those people and say, you know what? 
My eyes, I like to hit you with a club. But Jesus' eyes, I love you. And I want the best for you. And we're all in that same position, aren't we? We all go through stuff. We're all in places where, where we wish we could just take out a, a, a bat and just do them in. Right? Seriously. If you don't think that way, then you're then you're mighty, you know, you're sitting on the throne room of Jesus. <laughs> Because I'll tell you what, sometimes your spirit is weak or willing, but your flesh is weak. And the weak part of your flesh wants to do damage. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah. But the spirit wants to make you powerful. Verse 11, concerning judgment, because the rule of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. You can't understand them now. You won't be able to process them now in your flesh mind. You won't be able to understand what I'm saying. Then look what he says here. But when He, <laughs> but when He, the Spirit of truth comes, the Helper, the Comforter, truth, all truth, say all truth, all truth. nothing will be hidden from you. No mystery will be able to evade you. Nothing. He wants to give everything to you. He wants to fill you and bring your remembrance and put in your spirit everything. He will guide you into all truth for He will not speak on His own authority. Have you seen people use and abuse the Holy Ghost and speak someone else's authority? That's what the church is up against today. But I'm here to tell you this, this one thing. Let the Spirit move in you and be guided by the Spirit and you will not prostitute the, the things that God has given you. It won't happen. But the Spirit wants to give you power. Wants to give you authority. Wants you to be able to look at what you need to look at and say, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, I call upon this. I call upon that. I call upon... Didn't, the... Didn't Jesus Himself say, whatever you pray for, whatever you ask for in My name? He didn't say, but... Whatever. Oh, I'm not worthy. Who says? Who says you're not worthy? Oh, you know, I got saved 15 years ago and I've been through such hell. Raise your hands if you haven't been in hell the last 15 years. Come on! If, if, if you have, if you have been, if you have been an absolute... Yeah! Amen! He will guide you into the truth or He will not speak on His own initiative, but whatever He hears, He will speak. And He will disclose to you what is to come. He shall glorify Me, for He shall take of Mine and shall disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are Mine. Therefore I said that He takes of Mine and will disclose it to you. He'll take what's His, and we know the Bible says that He's the Word. Amen? First John, or John chapter 1. He is the Word. So He takes what God has given Him and makes it yours. He makes the Word yours. He makes Him you. He, yours. He makes the Spirit yours. What's the key? Obeying Him. Obeying Him, receiving Him, and emptying out the trash that's in your life. <laughs> Empty out the muddy water that's in your life. Empty out the stuff in your life that's holding Him. Hold, you know what, folks? You, in your spirit, are holding Him back from bringing the full and complete revelation of who you are in Christ. Why? It's because we don't want to give it up. We want to do what we want to do. We want to go what we want to go. We want to be what we want to be. But if we want to be followers of Jesus, we need to give all that up. Amen? Mm -hmm. Turn back to chapter 14 of John. And we'll go to verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper, that He may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not behold Him or know Him. But you know Him, because He abides with you, and will come and will be in you. He abides with you and He will be in you. Did you get that? He will be in you. He will not only walk with you, but He will be in you. 
And remember this, folks. Whenever you're inclined to do something and you feel like you're being pushed, it's not the Spirit. The Spirit pulls. The Spirit leads. The Spirit gives you direction. But whenever you feel pushed or prodded, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's the enemy trying to convince you that where you're at may not be right. But as you allow the Spirit to pull you on the way, to walk before you and give you guidance and open up the doors before you and open up whatever is coming against you, then you'll be able to step in the power of the Spirit and walk in the freedom that He gives to you. That's Holy Ghost. That's holy, and I'm going to say this. You might not like it, but that's Holy Ghost's responsibility. That's His responsibility is to bring power upon you. The Bible says in the beginning the Holy Spirit was traversing, was traveling, was moving over the face of the earth. Amen? And things came into existence. That same Holy Spirit dwells in you today. Don't let anybody ever tell you, well, that isn't for today. That isn't for today. Or you have to do it this way. If you don't do it this way, uh, you know what? Next thing you want to know, they want to put God in a box. They want to put Holy Ghost in a box because if you don't do it their way, then you ain't doing it. Amen? Let's read on. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will behold me no more. But you will behold me because I live, you shall live also. We cannot live the life that God has given us without the power of the Holy Spirit. We think we are. We can be good as we can be, but without the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot live the life that God expects us to live. Does that mean we're perfect? No. But in Leviticus and Hebrews both, it says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. It doesn't say be perfect. It says be holy. Being holy after God has desired to do the things and walk in the Spirit that He has given us and as He reveals mysteries to us, as He reveals a hidden word to us, we become revitalized because revelation has now come into our life. That's the Spirit's job. And sometimes we fail to let the Spirit do what He wants to do because we want to do it. I, I, I firmly believe this, folks. <clears throat> Once the Spirit comes upon you and, you and you walk in that power and you walk in that revelation, I think it's harder to turn your back on God with the Spirit guiding you. I believe it's the most difficult thing we can do is turn our back on God, especially after experience in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because what happens, we begin to think, well, you know what? How did I get here? I never turned my back on the Holy Ghost. Really? Does your walk, does your fruit show that? The Bible says there's none perfect, no, not one, but the Holy Spirit brings us in our flesh as close as we can possibly get Amen? And God is not a man that He can lie. He cannot lie. Turn back to me to Acts. Acts chapter 1, we're going to go to verse 9. And after he had said these things, these things about uh, the church coming under power and walking in the power of the Spirit and being equipped by the, and, by the Holy Ghost and being, and being uh, endued with the power from on high, he says this, And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was departing, behold, two men in white clothes stood be, be, beside them. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into the heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. <coughs> Remember what Jesus said before he left? 
He said, go to the room, go to the city, and don't leave there until you've been had the power from on high. Don't go in the upper room and stay there and be there in one mind and one accord. Remember that? Yes. Can you imagine the psalm said, you know what? He's gone now. So, I can almost see Daddy Thomas say, you know what? i got to see it to believe it. But Daddy Thomas had his experience with Jesus, remember? And from that time on, he was locked in. Amen? Have you had that kind of experience? Has Jesus brought you revelation that you never even thunk of before? Has Jesus revealed Himself to you through the power of the Holy Spirit that you're going, man? Have you ever read a word that you've read a million times and something just jumped out at you? Whoa! The Holy Spirit, the great revelator, the great comforter, the great helper is showing you something that you've missed. And it would never happen unless he sent him. Amen? Look what he says here. Or what what uh, Luke says here is right in Acts. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. I'm in Acts chapter 1. Verse 12. And when they had entered, they went into the upper room where they had, were staying, that is, Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all were with one mind, were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women, Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So they were there wanting to receive because Jesus said, go, I'm going to send you the helper. I'm going to send you power from on high. I'm going to send you what you need to accomplish the call that I placed upon your life. Now we know today, today most of us probably wouldn't have went. You might have walked with Jesus for 15 years and he said, I want you to do this. Well, you know what, God, I'm, I'm really, that's really not me. You know, can you ask someone else? Yeah, I could, but the call's yours. And once He calls you and given you a gift, guess what, folks? It's yours. There's no reneging on it. There's no taking it back. You might not exercise it, you might not fulfill it, but it's still your gift. And one day when you wake up to the fact that God has called you, that Jesus has called you, and the Holy Spirit has empowered you, the gift is still there. But now you're under the, the, the inspiration to fulfill what God has asked you to do. So they were there at one accord. They were there with one mind. They were there, you know, doing what Jesus had told them to do. Verse 15 says, At this point, at this time, Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren, and gathering of about 120 persons was there together. Brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit foretold by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Now, he's telling the people what, what took place had to happen. So Peter's beginning to teach after going through what he's went through. He's beginning to step into his own without even receiving the power of the Holy Ghost yet. But he knows what God has called him to. So he begins to teach. He begins to, to show them. He begins, to, he begins to, to, to show them what Jesus said. He begins to explain to them what Jesus said. You remember this. This had to happen. And if you remember the scripture, when, Ju when Jesus put the bread in Judas' mouth, the scripture said the, whole, the, the, the devil came on him right then. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were already together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Filled the whole house where they were sitting. Have you ever been in the presence of God? I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but just about every Sunday morning we're in the presence of God. Amen? Every Sunday morning when we get, sometimes we have to force ourselves to get in the presence, don't we? But He's there. There's an old song, I don't, I don't remember, I'm not even going to pretend to sing it. But it goes something like this. 
I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. I can feel the brush of angels' wings and see the joy upon each face. The presence of the Lord is surely in this place. Have you experienced that? Yes. Yeah. Have you experienced His perfect joy and His perfect peace? Yeah. Folks, it only comes it only comes by the Holy Spirit opening up your heart. It only comes by the Holy Spirit giving you an eye into what's about to take place in your life. Quit hiding from Him. Quit turning your back on Him. Because if you've got people praying for you, she'll get you. It might be on your 87th birthday. But he'll get you. Because God cannot lie. Amen? When God has promised a loved one of yours that I will bring him into the fold, take it to the bank. Regardless of how long it takes, it will happen. And every time you see an individual, boy, I bet God's working on him. Why well, do you know that? I just know it. I just know it. They were all together. Suddenly, a mighty wind came. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. They began to speak in other tongues. They began to speak in other languages that they didn't know. Sometimes when we speak in tongues in our own little private life or where God brings it up in the sanctuary, we're thinking, man, what did I just say? Holy Ghost knows. Amen? Holy Ghost knows. And He'll say, Glenn, I want you to interpret this. Whoa. That's the way it works, folks. But we have to be open to it. We have to have an ear to the flow. We have to know when Holy Ghost is moving. And the way we know Holy Ghost is moving is we can feel His presence. We recognize that He's moving. That's why when Holy Ghost starts to move in a service, we need to go. We need to stop. And the Holy Ghost do what He wants to do. Amen? If we're not sensitive to the Holy Spirit enough to allow Him to move in our life, how are we ever going to allow Him to move in our meetings, in our, in our togetherness? And let me tell you something. He's no respecter of persons. So just because you have a gift that somebody else doesn't have doesn't make you to catch me out. Right? Because He gives each and every one in this room a particular gift. But we all can have the gift of speaking in other languages, other tongues. That belongs to us. It's ours. It's our right. But sometimes we get afraid of it because what, what we've seen in the past, what people have done with it. That doesn't mean you have to go crazy with it every time you move or open your mouth or stuff. No, that's not what it's about. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that's when the revelation comes. You know, and then has anybody here experienced that? Right? The Holy Spirit moves in my heart. Amen. And we can't be shy, and we can't be, um, we can't be disobedient. Because in our obedience, that's when He becomes real. We can all walk around like we're greater than anybody else, because we have this gift, and we have that gift. Uh, a friend of mine was at our house yesterday, I think it was. He said, "How's it going, Pastor John?" Coming from this guy, for him to come down, it's like, whoa. That's awesome, right? Not anything about me, but just because where some people come from, you think, man, what an affirmation. Then he says to me, how's the church going? I said, well, my goal is to allow everybody to go as deep as they, their desire to go deep. That's my goal. And to see everyone, just like 2 Timothy says, just like have everyone come to a saving knowledge of the Word of God, of Jesus Christ, and just produce that, right? He says there's two kinds of pastors. I said, oh yeah? And I'm thinking, oh man, here comes a hammer. <laughs> he says there's two kinds of pastors. He says there's pastors that pull, and he says then there's cowboy pastors that push. I don't want to be a cowboy pusher. I want to be a puller. Now, have I been a pusher in the past? Yeah. 
But I want to be a part. And I want the Holy Spirit to do in all of you what He wants to do in everybody else. In order to do that, we have to succumb to His enlightenment. We have to succumb to, to what He's called us to do. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient to what God has, has called us and asked us to do. I'm not, that, something, the Lord just dropped something in my spirit. Hang on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know we have a legacy? Jesus will never leave you alone. We have a legacy. And the legacy of Jesus in us. That's a legacy. Chapter 14 of John says this. Verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. And believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwellings places. If we're not so, I would not have told you, for I go to the prepared place for you. If we don't get the revelation from the Holy Spirit, we can't believe that scripture. Are you with me? But He's promised us. He's promised us. He's promised us a legacy if we obey what the Spirit has for us. He's promised us a legacy to be comforted by Him, to have power from Him. On the day of Pentecost, the church received power. You receive power on the day of Pentecost. They receive power. What's the first? You remember what the first thing Peter did when the Holy Ghost came upon him and they broke the meeting up, the 120 upper. You remember that? Remember what he did in Acts? He began to preach a message under the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost. Three thousand came to a saving knowledge of Jesus. Remember? And then he goes on another place and another four or five thousand come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Why? Because he was influenced. He was under the power of the Holy Spirit. Not that the Holy Spirit is an influence because that's, that's the wrong word. He is the Son of God incarnate by the Holy Spirit. He's part of the Trinity. He's God the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. You will receive power. He will never leave you. He will never leave you as orphans. You will never be an orphan. You will never be an orphan. You will never feel lonely if the Holy Spirit, as the Holy Spirit brings you to a relationship, you will never feel like you're an orphan. You will never feel like you're out here on your own. You will never feel like you have to do it alone. If you do, that's your fault. If you can separate yourself from like-minded people, you will not get the 120 experience that they've got in the upper room. What happened? What happened? Why? It's because you need, you need like-minded people. You need to be surrounded by like-minded people. Same thinking people. Same faith-filled people. Those people you need. But sometimes we want to traverse and go on our own. And God says, wait, don't, don't, don't. I'm developing in you. I'm developing in you. Well, you know, I've been going to church for six years and nothing's ever happened. Whose fault is that? Your yours. I've been going to the same church for 15 years and they've been saying this and but nothing's ever happened. Whose fault is that? Amen. Your responsibility to grow in Jesus is your responsibility. And the Holy Spirit is there to teach you and to show you and bring you alongside the revelations and the mysteries of the Word. Don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid of, of, of people speaking in tongues around you. Don't be afraid of prophecy. Don't be afraid of, of, of stuff that doesn't sound right to you. Because if it's not right, the Spirit will reveal it to someone that knows it. You know what? We need to shut that down. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So you have, to give your, you have to give yourself over to the teaching, the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you will be, you will be lost in a, in a conundrum. <laughs> you will be lost. You will be lost. You won't be able to you won't be able to understand what God's doing for you, in you, and with you if you deny Him. <laughs> Amen. Oh You are a living legacy. <laughs> Jesus will always leave you with his peace. So something's happening around you, the Holy Ghost is, is moving and, and, and moving in the service or moving in your heart, and you're uncomfortable by that. Sit for a few minutes. Sit for a few minutes and see what the Spirit does. Amen? Sometimes we get so charged up in ourselves. That don't make sense. Well, you know what? 
Half the word doesn't make sense to us if you to you by the word. Amen. Amen. The word. The word of God doesn't make sense to you unless the Spirit reveals it to you. And mark my words, if you're reading the Word and you're getting a little bit of knowledge that some things are starting to happen in your spirit, you let the Holy Ghost bring you Mrs. Revelation, you go, whoa! And the phone rings. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. If the phone rings, don't answer. <laughs> if you're in the middle, you're right in the middle of God's Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. When Pentecost came, the church received power. Power to do what? The Holy Ghost didn't come so you he comes so you can evangelize the world. He comes so you can share in the middle of the roughest people you've ever met in your life. You, you can minister to people just by, you don't have to say a word. Who you are in Jesus and how you walk, that sometimes that speaks louder than anything you could ever say. Amen. And one day some guy says, you know, I noticed that you didn't lose your cool during this. Can you tell me why? Yeah, you got a few minutes. Relationship begins with conversation. <laughs> Amen? And as you develop a relationship, when you develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit, it allows you to open up relationships with those He's prepared their heart to receive. Amen? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we talk to people, nothing ever happens, what's going on here, I don't understand what's going on, and the Holy Spirit you think has directed you to the individual, but the individual isn't prepared to hear from you yet. So what do you do? Well, okay, Lord, Holy Spirit, in, in your time, you, re, you reveal some more. And I'll be able to walk into that. I'll be able to, to continue in that. I'll be able to do what you ask me to do. We get so, we get so anxious sometimes. I want to do something now. Right? Well, we just heard the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that's when you receive the power. That's when you receive the power to heal the sick and raise the dead. And again, ain't you doing it. It's Him that's doing it through you by the power and the unction and the, and the, and the ability of the Holy Ghost to work through you. Yeah. The ability to, for the Holy Ghost to work through you because we can shut Him down. We can shut Him down by what comes out of here. We can shut Him down by what comes out of here. We can shut Him down by, you know what, that's ridiculous, really. If it's a Holy Ghost, your heart's going to bear witness to it. Your spirit will bear witness to it. If you know and walk in the Spirit. When, when you're in a service, and let's say you, you don't have that, that gift yet, you don't have that uh, uh, special helper yet that's invaded your life, but you're, you still have the Spirit in you. Don't get me wrong, the Spirit's still in you. Something happens when things begin to sound right, something happens, you know what, that, that makes sense to me. That's the Holy Spirit bringing revelation to your, to your spirit. But the next step is becoming powerful by allowing Him to, to bring you to a level of relationship that fills you with the power to evangelize. To go, you cannot go into all the world without the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't do it. You might think you can, but you can't. Because I'll tell you what happens. You find yourself in a place where you thought, man, I can really, I can, I, here's that big eye word again. I can really do this, I can really do that, and next thing you know, you got puddle of mud all over your face. <laughs> Why? It's because you went in you. You have to go in Him. So sometimes we put ourselves in a position, in a predicament, where we think we can do it, and we can't, so next thing you know, we're getting bombarded by the outside. We're getting bombarded by the enemy. So we need to be able to understand and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's, what, that's what the gift's for. And it, it, it came so fast after, after Jesus left that the only way that they could produce more, more, more little Jesuses, if you will, is to have the power of the Holy Ghost in them. And what's amazing about, about that one story was uh, all them people that came for Passover all heard different... In their own in their own languages. Amen. Yeah. I know an individual that went somewhere uh, Portuguese, which they say is like the hardest language in the world to learn. He went to Portugal on a mission trip. Holy Spirit came upon him, and he was able to verbally communicate with everybody he ran into. Never never took a class in his life. Yeah. That's the Spirit that dwells in you. Amen. 
And today, when we speak in our unknown language, we speak in our heaven language, we speak in our Holy, Holy Spirit-driven language, when He does, He's speaking to your heart because the Bible says sometimes when we pray in the Spirit because we don't have a clue what to pray, but He does. So when we begin to pray in our unknown language, pray in the language of the Holy Spirit, it's going to throne them, and then you receive it back in a way that, whoa! Right? So let's not count the Holy Ghost out of our lives. Let's make sure that we're walking after and being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All eyes closed. All heads bowed. Father, thank you for sending your Spirit. Amen. God, Holy Ghost, thank you for coming. Thank you for filling us with the power that we need to be an overcomer. We know that we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, the power of our testimony. Sometimes Holy Ghost even has to bring that power for us to share our testimony. So today, Lord, I pray, God, that you release power in this room. I pray that every individual receives something this week that, that just brings them to a closer walk, to a closer revelation of who you are in their lives. I pray this week, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you will show up in wherever they are and you will give them peace and you will give them joy. But more than that, I pray for the gift. I pray for the gift that's for everyone. I pray, God, that we can reach up and claim that gift as you take us to the wilderness, as you take us to the desert places where we are to learn and grow in you. We pray for revelation, fresh, new revelation into the mysteries of the Word that only Holy Spirit can bring us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Brothers, would you come with the communion? Hey, you want somebody else to do it? Yeah, someone like to volunteer? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. Personal day with that. one day with like-minded people and the Holy Spirit flipped the service on his head. What would you do? Ah! What's going on? My comfort's just been blown away. Right? But one day you might walk in this place and I'll tell you why I'm saying this because the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about something. And the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about order. Right? Holy Ghost's been talking about order. And he says to me, he says, who designed the order of the worship? Don, you broke. I'm hearing it. Who designed the order of the worship? And I said, Lord, I don't have a clue. But I know that you designed it originally in heaven. And I know that you're the one that's responsible for worship. And I know that sometimes man throws their two cents in it and it gets twisted. It gets grounded in a place where it wasn't meant to be grounded in. If you remember the second chapter of Acts Church, there wasn't no, well, 8, 1101, we're going to start, 1105. 1105, we're going to, we're going to, no. The second chapter of the Acts Church came together with like-mindedness and they had a service to worship the glorified God. And whatever took place in that service was okay because God was in it. Amen? How many of you would go to a service, would come to this service and didn't look nothing like you pictured? Came into service? Maybe some people got up and shared? 
Maybe the Holy Spirit got up on so, so and so, and maybe they got up and shared, sang a song, shared some more. Somebody from the uh, from the from the audience was Somebody from the congregation. Holy Spirit, I have something from so and so to say. Would you allow them to say it? Sure. It ain't, it ain't it ain't my service, folks. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Especially these two. Rooms. I know. Right? Yeah. But you but do you understand the freedom in that? If we let Holy Spirit drive our worship, if we let Holy Spirit drive our walk, freedom in that. So one day when you come to service, it might be turned around. There might be preaching first. There might be praying first. There might be worship in there somewhere, song-wise. The worship service might go the whole time. Amen? Amen. The Word will always be thrown in it. Somewhere, somehow, as we allow the Spirit to move, as we allow the Spirit to have its way, the Word will be taught, preached, given, whatever the case might be. But it's time for us to get out of our human mentality, our religious mentality, and let the Holy Spirit do what He wants to do in every individual. You know those people in this room right here that God has called to that have never had an opportunity to speak that call? You believe that? There's people in this room right now that God has got a call in their life, but they've been afraid or oppressed, oppressed shy. whatever, shy is a good word, from revealing what God has spoke to them. And I want God to have the freedom, Holy Spirit to have the freedom to speak to anybody at any time to stand up and speak to the rest of us. But remember this, he's a gentleman. So law will not be out of order. It will not glorify one or the other. It will be done in peace. It will be done in order. It will be done the way the Holy Ghost wants it done. Amen? Amen. Because the first time humans get involved in it, it's messed up. Yes. The first time the first time somebody wants to say something or speak something that just because they want to, that's not the Holy Ghost. It messes it up. Tell you what, it puts a lid on what God wants to do. Because he's a gentleman. Amen? And you will never see four or five people jump up in a spirit-led service saying different things. It won't happen. It might happen. They'll all say the same thing on a different way. Connected. They'll be connected. The Holy Spirit will connect them. No matter, it might be the same, might be different, but it will be connected. That's the way spirit works. Because if you speak something that's out of order for what's going on in the service, that's not God. What's God what the Spirit's doing in a service, everybody will be involved in that. And the first time someone says something out of that order, you know that, I'm going to repeat myself here, you know the Holy Ghost is a gentleman, nothing will be out of order, and I'll be led by Him, and guided by Him, amen? So be prepared, because Tim said something interesting the other day, every time we pray together in the office, so today I'm telling him I missed that prayer, by the way. <laughs> he gives me, he gives me a, uh, a spark, does that make sense? When you pray together with someone that like-minded, it gives you a spark. And it kind of elevates you. And I think what's going to happen here, as we begin to walk this walk, I think people are going to come to a level they've never experienced before. Amen. What is that? It, it, and it's not going to be weird or crazy or goofy. Amen? You're not going to see feathers come out of the vents. You're not going to see feathers come out of the You know, you're not, you're not going to see that. But you're going to see genuine move of the Spirit. Are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready? 